It's like that psalm. That psalm. That's the psalm. Psalm 30. 37. Where it says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Now see, this is psychic defense. And the psyche, the suke, is our soul. So we need to have psychic defense or psychic self-defense. This means that we have to psych ourselves up in the truth of the word. Where it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Most folks don't even recognize how we get envious of the workers of rebellion, those who rebel against God, those who go against the, the good way. They seem to prosper. They seem to thrive. And people then seek to be like them. You know what I'm saying? They get envious of them. Oh, I wish I could live that life. Oh, I wish I could do those sort of things. How interesting this is that the Word tells us to fret not ourselves because of evildoers. Don't even be fretted by it. You see, so how easy is that? Or rather, how difficult is that? This is where prayer and meditation, it's by praying and meditating, it doesn't mean that when you read it or study or even first understand it, you're going to get it. But you must psych yourself up into this. It's like in the Old Testament it talks about David. David and his, uh, I think that's around Samuel in the book of Samuel where um, David's wives, some of his women and his family and the family of his, his brethren, they were away on a mission. And when they came back, the enemy, I think it was the Philistines or one of the enemy tribes, right, they had kidnapped the people. They, you know, they used to be doing this kidnapping thing. And now we can recognize who these people are because they're still doing this sort of kidnapping in that same part of the world, even in this very day and time. So the Bible says that David, great King David, in this situation, a very stressing situation, and it shows, now here we get an object lesson of how David fretted not himself. It, you understand? Know, to, to say it like that, to say it anonymously, if you get that. Um, how David fretted not if himself is when he was in this situation. And we want to show you this right here because this is about psychic self-defense. In these evil days, in these evil times, we have to not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by renewing our mind. And this is a part of that sta steps and stages of renewal of our mind through meditation. And meditation upon what? Meditation upon the true logic. The only true logic in the universe is the word of the King of Kings and his Christ and the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, otherwise known as Jesus Christos, and anglicized among the Angles and the Europeans, the Anglo-Europeans as Jesus Christ, and whitewashed as well. But we know him as our black Lord, our black Lord, our black woolly-haired Lord and Savior. But the main part of the message is the testimony, is the word. See, it says that the word become flesh. The word became flesh. And as, as the word of God became flesh in our elder brother, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so must the word become flesh in you and me and I and I. The word must become that flesh in us. So now... Romans chapter 12 gives us some important clues about how that's done on a daily basis. It's a, it's, it's a process. You understand? It's a process. Not every day is our best day. You understand? But still, we don't give up. You understand? We hold the faith. We build. We do what we need to do. We repent. We ask and pray the Almighty to give us the strength to open up our hearts and minds to receive his word and his will so that we can make our wills obedient to good influences, which is making our wills obedient to the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So here I found the place in Scripture. And, and there's a key word in here. There's a key word in here that I want to um, share with 
share with you all when it talks about, here we go, it's in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 30. And all the brothers and the sisters and all those who are seeking discipleship, this is a part of the discipleship. So get your pen and your paper and jot this down and take your own notes, you understand, in your copy books. It says right here that David avenges the destruction of Ziklag, right, Ziklag. And let me just give you a little background into this particular story. It says, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, it's like we're, we're dealing with these Amalekites a lot nowadays, aren't we? They had invaded the south, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, that was a city, and burned it with fire. They liked to be playing with this fire, right? And, verse 2, they had taken women captives that were therein. They, they, they liked to do this, and this is the same sort of people in that same sort of region of the world that we're talking about. They slew not any. They didn't slay any either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. They, this is like what happened recently with the Somali, like famine thing. You notice that? They, they, they took these women, right, captives, and now they're demanding a ransom. Check it out. This is, it's the same thing. They said there's nothing new under the sun, you know, so it behooves us. If these things already happen and the things that are happening now already happened before, then we'll be wiser if we learn these things that already happen. So when we see them happen again, we'll recognize the pattern. We'll recognize what to do. We'll recognize the high road, and we'll avoid the so-called low road. It says, um, verse 3, So David, DVD, and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. This is like what's happened to a lot of us even in this present time. But what does David say in the Psalm of David, Psalm, Psalm 37? He says, fret not thyself. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Now, David didn't seek to be, get even with the evil doers. He was he sought to be better than them. You understand? So it's good over evil. And notice what David teaches us about psychic self-defense. It says that, verse 4, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Sean, can you imagine that? You're crying so hard. You're crying so hard that you don't even have any, 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 any power to cry no more. You know, I, I'm sure... Many of you all probably can identify with that, but just to show how intense this was, because they lost their wives, they lost their sons, they lost their daughters, were taken, kidnapped, you know what I'm saying, were, taken, were kidnapped, taken captive. Verse 5 says, and David's two wives were taken captives, his two wives, so David had two wives, right? Uh, he know I am the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Now, the wife of Nabal, well, you know, there's a little background to that story. I mean, she was before the wife of Nabal, the stingy, the stingy nigga. But, you know, that, that, that was done when Nabal croaked on what he was eating and stuff like that. And Abigail came over to David, and David received her. But now, check this out. Verse 6, it says, and David was greatly distressed. David was greatly distressed. He was anxious. He was, he, he was crazy, man. I mean, I mean, this could drive you mud. For the people spake of stoning him. Now his own, check it out, his own people, the people who were with him, they spoke of stoning him. They wanted to stone him. They, they said, David, this is all your fault. We're out here following you. You see what I'm saying? That's why his match, he says that uh, heavy is the head. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. You know, those of us who, who've been proactive to take those responsibilities, when something goes wrong, the same people who are cheering you on and, 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 and saying wonderful things, these same people, when they suffer the same loss that you suffer. In other words, it wasn't like David had all his wives and his children and everything. No, he lost 
his wives and children, right? And they lost their wives and children, right? So it wasn't like they just lost and David didn't lose. Then it'd be like, well, maybe David's in on it or something like that. But he's in the same boat with them, and they're thinking about, they spoke, it says spake, of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Because the soul, the psyche, so you look up that word soul, right? And in the Greek, the word soul is suke. And the word suke is psyche. And the psyche, not to explain the details, the metaphysical details of it, but the psyche encompasses the mind. It encompasses the, 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 the feelings, the thoughts, and the emotions, and the, and, and the mind. So the mind in the sense of the feelings, the thoughts, and the emotions, right? That's the soul or the psyche, because the soul or the psyche, or we can say so we can understand or understand that the psychology, right, of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. Every man for his children. You understand? Because that's, that then and even that now, that's, that was the real wealth. They were grieved for their children. Notice it doesn't say for their wives. Now, this is no pun or nothing like that, but it said mainly for their sons and for their daughters, or every man for his sons and for his daughters. Now, here's, check this out. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And here it says, But David, Dawit, encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But Dawit did what? He encouraged himself. He strengthened himself. He built up himself in the Lord his God. Now, here in the Schofield Study Bible, they have a G next to encourage. So if you're studying with us there, it shows a couple of psalms. It actually gives a whole bunch of psalms. It says Psalm 18 and 6. Psalm 25, 1 and 2, Psalm 34, 1 and 8, Psalm 41 and 2, Psalm 42, 5 and 11, Psalm 56, 1 and 4, Isaiah 25 and 4, Jeremiah 16 and 19, Habakkuk 3 and 17. Now, if you're a disciple, if you're, if you're really serious about discipleship, each one of these verses, you go, you look it up. Some would even write it down if it really means that, if, 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 if this knowledge, if this gnosis, the knowledge of the King of Kings and His Christ means something to you, then take that personal responsibility. Look up each of these verses. You understand? Get, get your Schofield um, Study Bible. We have it as freeware, shareware at the site, www.lojsociety.org forward slash study. Go to that page. There's a lot of other shareware and freeware. Download it. Share it. Freely freely re given, freely received, freely give. You know what I mean? Yahweh loves a cheerful giver. You know what I'm Don't be, in other words, don't be spiritually stingy, in other words. You know what I'm Now, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That means that David understood psychic self-defense. He had to build himself up. He had to strengthen himself. Now, if I would just go to the heart for a moment, let's just quickly, quickly look at the Mets of Caduce of Negus and Negus. Amen. Let's look in his majesty's Bible right here for one moment. Because what we want to do, we, we know what encourage means in English, right? But we want to go to the, to the Amharic. We want to go to the pure language, the purified language of the King of Kings and his Christ and find out how this verse here reads. Okay, here it goes. Besama Awal Memphis Kedusa Hado Amlak. It says, Sile Wendochna Sile Setoch Le Jochacho Ye Hizbu Hulu Leba Te Quatito Neberna Hizbu Lia Wegaruta Sile Tenagaru Dawit Ijiga Te Cheneke Dawit again. Be amlaku be egezi ab her libun aberta. Libun, his heart, to say his labona, his consciousness, aberta. He strengthened, he firmed it. You know, um, beret, I think it's like iron, you know, in them heart. So he made, he was like iron, like a lion out of Zion. So he, he strengthened 
his heart to say he strengthened his consciousness in, notice that key, he didn't just strengthen himself. He didn't just encourage himself in himself. No, he encouraged himself in the Lord, Yahweh, yod Hey, wow Hey, his God, his Elohim. It says, berta. So he strengthened himself in his source, in his amlak, the amlaku, you understand? In, his, in the sustainer, in Yahweh, he who is who he is, the true and the living God. He, he strengthened his heart, which is to say his mind, which is referring to his consciousness. You know, in all that stress, you know, and all that when you're in stress and pain and tribulation, it's easy for the mind to just go all over the place. So he focused, he focused himself. And this is a part of what we learned from Dawit, great King David, was his psychic defense. This is why the word says that David was a man after Yahweh's own heart, after Yahweh's own heart. And it's very interesting, even more of this particular, of course, as, as we know, and we'll just let you in, they got, they got everybody back. They went after those niggas, and they got their property, they got their woman, they got their children, they got everything that, that, these, um, that these heathen had taken from them. I mean, they recovered, you know, they recovered their loss, in other words. So that's, that right there shows how they man up. You understand? Because first of all, they rooted themselves, rooted and grounded themselves. Well, David showed that example, you see? And once David showed that example as their leader, as their head, the rest of them followed suit and, and took good course. course. So it, it worked out for them. That, that's just one example in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse, verse 6 of psychic defense. Now, Psalm 37 which we also call the Shashimeni or the Promised Land Psalm, you know, was, um, is a very, very important psalm. And just a little bit more of this, where it says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. This is like what we said a little bit earlier, that do not try or do not even think about getting even with evil. Don't get even with evil or with evildoers or the wicked or the devils or Satan's because then if you are successful, you become just like them. And therefore, that is how the evil, the, the principalities and the forces of, of, of darkness, you understand, of disillumination, this is how they win. You understand, this is how they have been winning as well. It says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So when it says David encouraged himself in the Lord his God, remember, this is a psalm of David. So in, in, in the psalms of David, it tells us and it teaches us and shows us and demonstrates us David's thought process, the thought process of the overcomers, of how we have to be transformed how we have to repent, how we have to think differently. That's what repentance means. Some translate and interpret as change your mind. It does mean change your mind, but in the sense of think differently. You understand? Know think differently. Don't think mundanely, you understand? Know but think iritically or spiritually. Don't just think physically. Think metaphysically. It says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. And on that point about green herb, you know, how could we resist, you know? Mm-hmm. How could we resist a split? Ah, woo. It says, trust in Yahweh. Trust in yod Hey, wow Hey. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Just like the dinghy hop, do good. Do good. Do good. Do good. Do good. Now, qualify, qualify, qualify. You see, a lot of us will say do good, and we'll think in our own ignorant heads and hearts what we think is good. No, first you must study and show yourself approved and learn what Yahweh, what, what, what Christ, what our Lord and Savior tells us is good and demonstrates to us is good. So, because our standards, our morality, 
our way of thinking, our way of living, this whole world is effed up. It's a sinful world. That's what makes it so effed up. Trust in Yahweh and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You understand? It didn't say you're going to be fed because you're going to so-called um, have a good job. It doesn't say you're going to be fed because you're going to have a big bank account. You understand? Or because you're going to go to their colleges, you understand, and not gain any real sustainable knowledges and then owe a whole bunch of debt. No. It says, by trusting in he who is who he is, delight thyself also in Yahweh, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, a little qualification right here. Desires of one's heart is that which is in your heart for righteousness. But this is not speaking to ones who are not born again. It's ideally speaking to those who are born again. So some people might try to take a couple of verses out of here and try to work in and say, oh, it doesn't work for me. Because you're not, you're not in proper, you're not in good standing, in his good standing. Have you been born again? You understand? Have you sought to think differently? Have you recognized your faulty way of thinking and the world's faulty way of thinking and recognize the superiority of our black Lord and Savior's logic or of his word? Now, once you do, then we can, then we can delight ourselves. Then one does delight themselves in Yahweh. Because what does it say about one who delights himself in Yahweh? Go back to the first psalm for a moment. It says, Blesses the man. Asher Ha'ish, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Asher Ha'ish, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Asher not Ha'ish, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, verse 2, his what? His simcha, his, his desita, his sisha, his, his delight, his joy, his rejoicing is in the law of Yahweh, in the law of Jah, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He meditates, he thinks on it, because if you really seek to do the Father's will, and you're learning this scripture, you've got to be meditating on it, because you're trying to think, what does this mean? You're trying to think, what does this mean? And when you recognize what it means, then you go to the next level, you're like, wow, how can I get from where I'm at and be more conformed to the image of his son, of Yeshua, of Jesus Christos. And see, when you start to think that sort of way, then one can truly say they are, they are in good standing in discipleship, and they understand what that discipleship is about, because Majesty teaches us that discipline of the mind. You understand? The discipline of the mind. But moving forward right here, so delight thyself, also in Yahweh, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Mm-hmm. Because then the desires of one's heart, once they are born again, are in conformity with his will. Because one has learned what his will is. One knows what his will is. Yes, belief or trust is necessary at that first level. That's why he says, believe me, which is trust me. You understand? But then learn the will and then do it. Then put it into effect. Demonstrate it so you know it for yourself. That's how you gain gnosis or gnosis. It says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness. You, you see that? Thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest, Shabbat, in other words, in Yahweh, in the Lord, if you please, and wait patiently, wait patiently for him. Now, if we wait patiently for Yahweh and Yahweh is the spirit, we still do what we got to do, you understand, in the so-called mundane world. But still, in spirit and in truth, we're waiting for him to illuminate us and, and, to, and to guide us and to confirm our prayers and our reasonings and to, you know what I mean, we're waiting for him. You understand, we wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Now look at the state of even the lost sheep right now. Everybody wants to be a gangster. 
You understand? Everybody wants to be, well, not everybody, but, you know, we're speaking superfluously. You understand? Everyone wants to be a prostitute or a pole stripper because they see those people got money. They're making money and doing all those things. They're fretting themselves because of ones who prospers in his way but not in Yah's way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Cease from anger. And that's probably one of the most difficult things for us as black men. That's why they have all these anger management programs out there because we do need anger management. But they're only giving us lower-level psychology. You understand? What we need is the teachings of his majesty. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So when you seek to get even with evildoers, you're fretting yourself in, in an unwise way to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon Yahweh, they shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. It's like if you go and look for the Twin Towers, you know, those of us who know this, of this building, you, and you go in that area, it's like something is strange. Something was here, but what happened? It's no longer there. It shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. You, you see, because they've already come to that spiritual peace. You know what I'm saying? And like the spiritual law of the universe is like attract like. This is why the Almighty says, come out from amongst her. Come out from amongst, come out of Babylon. Come out of that confusion. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Adonai shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. Isn't that what we're seeing in this time? Isn't that what we're seeing? The wicked have done what? They've drawn out the sword. You see all this war going on. They, they have money for war, but not money for daycare, not money for, for, for families, whether single mothers, not money for children in colleges. They don't have money for that. Money for people to keep their homes. They don't got no money for that. But, they, but it says the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down, to cast down the poor and needy. Remember, the poor and needy are already cast down, but to cast them in a pit, like to say, and to slay such as be of upright conversation, and to slay those that are of an upright behavior. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. The, the sword that they draw out against us, against the poor and the needy, it's going to go into their own hearts. And their bows shall be broken. All their weapons of mass destruction, delusion, and distraction. A little that the righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. You see, but see, this whole psycho psychology and spell. This spell of Willie Lynchism and these spells got folks thinking that, that, that um, their little bit, even though they may be righteous and right standing with God and Christ, is not good enough. They want all the riches of many wicked. But it says, a little that the righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But Yahweh upholdeth, upholdeth the righteous. You understand? The rising of the arm, the Amsu, Horus. You understand? The raising of the arms. Yahweh knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Forever. How long is forever? Forever is forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And you know where we're headed now, where humanity is headed. It's, it's, it, this is like an eclipse right now. We're like in a twilight time, you know, when the light of day is going down and the evening is coming in and it's twilight time. You don't know whether the day is coming back or whether night is coming in, you know. This is the twilight. We're in the twilight zone right now as we're going into 20, 2012, we're approaching the 11, 11, even right about, right about now. But it says that they shall not be ashamed, speaking of the Tzadik in the evil time. 
I'm thinking about that verse in Timothy, what, uh, uh, is this Ephesians? It says, redeem the time because the days are evil. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. In the days of famine, a lot of people don't think that a famine is coming. A famine is coming. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahweh shall be as the fat of lambs, and they shall consume into smoke shall they consume away into smoke. That's how they're going to, mm-hmm. They're going to consume away just like the grass, the grass that they say we burn. You understand? But it's incense. It's a holy thing. The wicked, it says, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You know, it's like, they said 40 acres and a mule, right? They never gave that. But still, the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Cut off. So it's all about him. It's all about him, my brothers and sisters. The steps of a good man, it says, are ordered by Yahweh. So we keep the Sabbath. There's certain readings, there's certain seasons. See, the steps of, what does it say? The steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delighteth in his way. He delighteth in his way. So we delight in Yah's way, and Yah delights in I and I way, because I and I way is Yah's way. Though he fall, and see, some people think, well, if you're righteous, you'll never go through no problems. You'll never have nothing. So, no, no, it says, the, it's though he fall, the righteous might fall. You understand, especially this world is just so evil. You understand, it would be amazing if one did not. He shall not be utterly cast down. So he may stumble, like I had the saying that I used to say a lot, that uh, sometimes a uh, drunk man may walk straight, and a sober man may stagger. We all make mistakes. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For Yahweh upholdeth him with his hand. Yahweh upholds him with his yod, with his yod, with his right hand, with his yemen, yemen. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, nor his seed begging bread. The righteous, nor his righteous seed, should we say, begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil. Depart from thinking about getting even with wicked doers and evil doers. No. Think about good over evil. That's what you should meditate on, good over evil. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For Yahweh loveth judgment, loves, Yahweh loves judgment, and forsaketh not his son. He don't forsake those who have separated themselves to him, his holy ones. They are preserved forever. But the seed, the seed of the wicked shall be cut off shall be cut off. There's another level of that we could get into, you know what I mean, because not everyone is, in, a, in that sense, fruitful and multiplying. And if you're not, it's not saying you're wicked, but there's, we see there's a lot of folks that have to either be, like, in test tubes and a lot of things, and it seems like something else is going on in this, in this world. Though they also have put out diseases that have made fruitful people barren, though they you understand, don't have any fruitfulness because of that wickedness that's in them, Yovas. And, and, and on the level spiritual, if they, can, if, if they would repent, a lot of things, would they would be blessed. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The mouth of the righteous. People say, you talk about judgment too much. Stop judging, judging, judging. But it says the mouth of the righteous does what? speaketh wisdom, and his tongue does what? Talketh of judgment. The law of his God. You know, it says his God, like David in um, 1 Samuel 30 and 6. His God, his God, you know, not their God. They say we all have one God. No, it says his God. 
You understand? Not their God. The law of his God is in his heart. It's in his consciousness. David strengthened himself. You understand? In his consciousness, in his mind, none of his steps shall slide. He took up proactive psychic self-defense, especially in this time that we're coming in. We all are going to need psychic self-defense. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Because they're always judging black man. They're always judging you this, you deadbeat, you, 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 you criminal, you pot smoker, you this, you that, you everything, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so it be, but Yahweh, it's about how Yah deals with us in his way. He will not leave us in their hand, nor condemn us us when we are judged. It says, wait on Yahweh. In other words, be patient, my brothers and sisters. Just like a farmer has to be patient, you know, and keep his way. And in that patience, don't slip and slide now. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. That's what it's all about. It's all about land. It's all about inheriting the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shall see it. So, why have we inherited our land? The wicked need to be cut off. You understand? Then we'll see it. I've seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man. Behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace, is salam, is shalom. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. I love that verse right there. It says the transgressors. You know how they, now they're trying to get everybody like all in one Tower of Babel, like we all get together in one big Tower of Babel because they, they want us as on a spiritual level as um, um, human hostages. You understand? Know human psychic psychical hostages. They want us down with them because they know this word. It says that the transgressors shall be destroyed together. So you want us together with them. As long as we're together with them and we're still righteous, then Yahweh is not going to destroy them, not going to, not going to bring the matrix wheel to roll over them just yet. So th this is why what's going on is going on. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Regardless of all their little tricks, iniquity of the Amorites not yet being full, their wickedness and the wicked will be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of Yahweh. It's not of you. It's not of me. It's not of I and I. It is of the King of Kings. And his righteousness is our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Jesus Christos. He is our righteousness. He is their strength in the time of trouble. We're about to head into a time of trouble and tribulation, one like they said was never, ever seen. You know, you know we're, not, we're, not, we're not wanting it to happen, you know what I'm saying? but we're recognizing that it is happening. So we have to deal with it, you know what I'm and Yahweh shall help them. He shall help I and I and deliver them. He shall deliver I and I. He shall deliver them from the wicked. He shall deliver I and I from the wicked and the weak hearted and save them and save I and I because they trust in him because I and I trust in him, in his imperial majesty, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, Siyume Gziabe Nugusa Neges Zechopia, and his Christ, the true Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. And this is just an example of the kind of gnosis, the kind of knowledge we need to have and what we need to meditate on in order to operate in psychic self defense, a spiritual Krav Maga. It's a spiritual Krav Maga. You know, Christ said to them, He said, um, Think not that I've come to bring peace. You know, but I've come to bring a sword. But then you look at the Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, he wasn't going around there brawling with everybody physically. You know what I'm saying? But metaphysically, you know what I'm saying? That sword metaphysically. So that's an example as well of the ultimate. Christ demonstrated his amare was the ultimate psychic self-defense. You know what I'm saying? David 
was a man after his own heart. So David had it, you know, he had it in head and in heart. But now Christ brought the whole thing, Yeshua brought the whole thing full because he destroyed in himself the last enemy. And you know what that last enemy is, right? That last enemy is death. He destroyed death. That is still the last enemy to be destroyed. And brothers and sisters, that enemy, death, can and will be destroyed. Trust in him, my brothers and sisters, and do good. Like the Naya Bingi drums say, the cat say, do good, do good, do good. One love, my brothers and sisters and mothers. Shalom Ras Teferi, your brother Wendem Yado. Pray for I and I as I and I pray for the I. Shalom.